Hey, this is YBR with Beam and G Drive, and today we're going to be taking a look at a guardrail. And there it is. Until next time, this is YBR. No. Uh, first thing I want to do is actually take a look at the parts menu where there's nothing you can change and the colors do not function. So if I want to be like, I want a pink guardrail. No. Guardrail is silver. One cool thing about the guardrail, though, is you can put it anywhere. Like, you can put it up here in the air, and nothing's going to move it from that spot. You could, uh, for example, if you really wanted to, you could go to the environment, put it to sun gravity, and it's still going to stay in that spot. It is that strong and durable. So let's go ahead and put it in a place that would actually make sense and then test it out. Like, for example, let's say you wanted to put it right here. So it protects you from falling off that edge. So now we can go ahead and get the truck and do some demonstrations. Set it right about there. Uh, do one reset and good to go. So let's say you were driving along and you just kind of doze asleep or something and boom, you get saved real easily in that kind of situation. But what happens if you doze asleep every time you commute and every time you go to work you end up hitting the guardrail and you have to get your car repaired? How many times will the guardrail survive before eventually it's your time to go? There it is. That's as many times as the guardrail was able to protect you. I hit it pretty hard. One thing to note though is the guardrail is kind of sitting lower than the ideal height. The ideal height for the guardrail is actually a little bit floating it seems like. It just does a little bit better job uh, when it's like up in the air. Maybe not quite that much. Just a little less than that. So like right there. There we go. So you'll see there's a small gap between the very bottom of the guardrail and the actual ground. That usually seems to be the best height where a car can't climb over it like you saw me do so you can hit it until basically it breaks so you can just keep on hitting it and hitting it and hitting it as you're gonna see me do and now the hits are getting more severe like before I was just kind of just bumping it on the side now I'm actually swinging the car into it you just do like a head-on collision and you see now it's uh, stopped the car more times than it did before already so that should be impressive but now the guardrail is gone I have taken it out on the next run, I should be able to fall off pretty easy unless I get caught up on those uh, rails. But I want to take the whole guardrail out first, which can be done with enough patience. You can just go, oh! And now the actual rail is gone, and it's really easy to fall off of it because there's, well, it's basically a ramp at this point to make you fly a little bit farther. It ain't going to do nothing to stop you from falling. So that's a pretty cool uh, demonstration, I think, of how it works. Uh, next, we could just do some basic testing, though. So we could just say, let's put it on the ground right here. And then we can just drive a car into it. So again, just a bit off the ground, like so. And we'll try a bunch of different directions that we can drive the car into it. Maybe the first one we'll do, actually. Instead of driving the car to it from there, we'll back it way up. And then we'll just ram the car into it in a very deadly fashion for the driver. This is one of those things where the, you'd be better off with no guardrail kind of things. So we're just going to go straight head on. I can't tell. What's the guardrail? Is that one right there, right? Yeah. So this is 73 miles per hour. I'm going to put a lot of slow-mo on this one because it's going to be a pretty fast collision. Guardrail kind of goes inside of the car at first. And then the second one, that one's doing the stopping, I think. Well, I'm still pushing through them. It's pushing through the uh, post one by one, but it's it stopped right there. That is a stopped vehicle. We're so gonna speed it up just a bit, and ta-da! See, if there was no guardrail there, we could have just kept driving. And under those circumstances, that is a 75 mile per hour crash at near instant stopping. That's probably gonna be fatal. It was a very severe crash. In Guardrail's like, ah, ha, ha, I got you. Guardrail, you need to calm down. All right, so here's another idea. Can we put, just plow through the guardrail in a single attempt if we're going fast enough directly at it? So, like, let's say there was a, a right angle corner and you fell asleep at the wheel and you just charge at the guardrail. Would it stay up? We're going to find out. And to do that, I'm going to go ahead and switch cars. I'm going to grab the 200BX. I could get something a little bit faster. You know, get the race edition. And it's silver on silver. I don't know if I want that. Let's go ahead and switch the color real quick to, uh, yeah, that'll work. Well, yeah, matte color. I really like the way those look. Like, it's one of those things where it's stereotypically bad to have a non-metallic color on your car, but I really like them. So, 
80-ish miles per hour, which is not that much faster than the last one, but it was from a lot shorter of a distance, and we are able to take this thing off. So there you go, you can plow right through the guardrail. I love the way the, the uh, wing is hanging like that. And yes, that is a wing. That is an airfoil that generates downforce. But I love how it's just hanging on by one support. That's cool. Um, how'd the guardrail hold up? <laughs> you can tell where I plowed through. Everything's bent around it, and then one of them's just destroyed. All right, so now we'll bring the speed down just a little bit and see if it'll support you at um, a more reasonable speed if you're going to be coming up to a right angle, maybe like... 50 to 60. There we go. It's able to stop you there, although that's a pretty brutal crash. It's not a gradual stop in any way whatsoever. It's like smashing into a brick wall. It's a hard stop. Well, I guess you could probably plow through some brick walls. I know you could do that with the brick wall in the game, but you know what I mean. It doesn't give you much uh, place to stop. It's just boom, you're stopped. A lot of G's. Your guts are bouncing all around your stomach. It's not very pleasant. So the next thing I want to test is what if we had a really heavy vehicle? Like, uh, what's the heaviest thing? Yes, the ATTE. This is going to be so dumb. We're going to just run this thing over. I'm going to do this extremely slowly to try to give the guardrail a chance to save me. But I'm pretty sure this thing is so heavy, it'll just run right over it. It's not going to stand a chance. So I'm coming to a stop almost. And we're just going to coast. We're going to coast at like 10 miles per hour. Ain't no stopping this AT. Oh, it got... It got kind of glitched on it. That don't count. Get off me. So the only reason it, caught, it stopped me was because it got stuck inside of me. It really did just basically run the guardrail right down. What about actually, I was going to change vehicles, but what if we came at it from the other direction? Where we're hitting it, um... Well, what I did before, I don't really know how to describe these kind of crashes. Because they're both head on. It's just one is in the long way of the rail and the other one's the short way, I guess. This is what I mean though. So we're gonna go pretty slow again, just 20 miles per hour cruising and we just, we just shoved the thing right off the guardrail like it was nothing. We need something a little bit lighter to be fair, so maybe the BTR, because it is a little bit lighter, not really, it's not a lightweight, but it's lighter. So we'll do the uh, same kind of test first where we just see can it slow the BTR down on an impact like this and if it doesn't do that there we'll try the other test as well so about 18 miles per hour and the guardrail's gone and it barely slowed it down really like we had a ton of momentum just plowing right through the guardrail so we'll try again like this and we'll make sure we do it nice and slow again About 20 miles per hour should be decent. Oh, it lost the momentum. I had to hit the gas pedal because I was just coasting into it. It wouldn't have made it if I didn't hit the gas pedal. Now I'm stuck on this stupid guardrail. Eat it up. I'm just eating it in my tires. It's just not helping this thing's drivability. It's just stuck. Oh, now it's really stuck. Get off me, guardrail. I forget that guard. It's dancing. Oh my goodness, the guardrail dances. Hold on. It's funny. I can't really get the camera on it while it dances, but it does dance. There, watch it dance. It's hard to see it. Who am I kidding? You can't see that. All right, bring the guardrail back down. Reasonable height. Yep. And now we can go ahead and... Uh, I don't know if there's really much else to do with the guardrail. It's kind of... That's about it. Ooh, we could hit it with a hammer if the hammer rotates in the right direction, and it does. This is going to be awkward to line these up, I'm pretty sure, though. Uh, that might work. I don't know. We'll see. Let's see here. Uh, hammer go. No, it doesn't work. What I'll do is I'll just let the hammer spin up, and then I'll just move the guardrail. That's probably the easier solution. Now that I think about it, so all I do is just say, freeze physics right there, and just bring the guardrail up to there. And now I should just hit it with a minimal effort. I don't know if it'll hit it with the actual hammer part or the other part. Perfect! That is exactly the look I was looking for. That was awesome. It just tore it right off. Oh, then it just 
it threw it away. I don't even. I can't even see where it went. How far did it just go? Wow. That went a long way. I mean, I've seen cars fly farther than that, but that was still a long way. Oh, it's not going to take it off again. I got lucky on that one. Because now it doesn't seem to get it in the right angle anymore. There we go. And it's off. You know, one more thing we could do if we're doing this kind of stuff is we could use a cannon. Oh, it was stretching that part out, wasn't it? That was kind of awkward looking. It's not going to do it again, though, is it? It is. Wait, it's stretching it. Oh, how long can it get? Well, oh, this is going to glitch out soon. No way, it's still going. Oh, oh. Uh, dead. It's fun while it lasted, though. Wow, 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 come on, pull up the thing so I don't have to watch that. Uh, next up, those are going to shoot it with a cannon. Whoa, cannon, cannon, no, don't flip over. I thought I was going to flip over for a second. So I'm going to line this up. I'm probably going to need to tilt it like the maximum angle to be able to hit this. We'll do max angle. Actual location should be about there, maybe? It looks like it'll hit. So I'll put on a bunch of slow-mo and fire. Hello, cannonball. There we go. It is a perfect hit. And will it take the whole thing with it? It's looking promising. Yes. It's like a superhero. It has a cape. That's the super cannonball. Oh, the cape fell off. It looked pretty cool, though. Cannonball maintained a lot of speed even after just plowing right through the guardrails. That was quite impressive. Wow, this is all oh, good goodness. My cannon fell over. I was going to change it anyways because that's all I really wanted to do with the cannon. Uh, next up would be... How about crushing it? I don't know what will happen if I do that, so it really should be interesting. Uh, we can move this a little bit more into the crusher, like right there. Maybe even a little bit more, like there. Pretty good. All right, what happens when you crush it? Oh, the posts just kind of stay where they were. And the middle part doesn't even get that crushed. How disappointing. Next idea. Hmm, large spinner it, yeah. I'm just throwing everything at this thing. Spin. Oh, it can't spin. Oh, uh, 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 ooh, ow, ooh, ooh, there it goes. So we'll spin it up, and then we'll just spawn in the uh, guardrail. Probably want this at a lot of slow mo, though, because it'll happen fast. What the? What happened to my slow mo? That was annoying. Try that again. Spin! We don't get slow mo, we're just gonna respawn it then. Here we go. Respawn. It just gets destroyed. Try slow mo again. That time it's working. Yeah, it just gets torn right off. I mean, that's totally not what a guardrail was made to do, anyways, but it's fun to see what happens. Guess who crashed the game? Yeah, it was me. I hate when that happens. So that's annoying, but whatever. We can spawn the guardrail back and we are once again good to go. And although I've done most of the things I could think of doing. I mean, there's one more idea I have, which is like, what if you try to like drift into it, you know? It's a realistic use of the guardrail instead of just obliterating it. In real life, you usually don't do a head-on collision with it. You kind of are driving alongside it. So you tap it or slide into it, those kinds of things. So like you're driving along and you just go, whoops, like that. That's a lot more realistic. And on something like that, the guardrail holds up really well, it seems like. Obviously, my car did get a, quite a bit of damage from that, but the guardrail got quite a bit less. So there's like another hit in the same spot just to see how durable that same spot is, and it seems good. So we could get a fresh guardrail and do a couple more hits like that. I think that last one was still a little too much head on by a tiny bit, so you know, 
We'll try to adjust. So we say like that. That's pretty realistic right there. Although the guardrail ate me up. I couldn't drive after that. And that one has some good damage on it. That one's definitely pushing that guardrail back a ton. And we could do one more thing like this. And I think uh, that'll about cover the guardrail since it's just a static object. There's not too much testing you can do with it. I mean, you should try to throw it down leap of death. Uh, it won't work. There we go. That's a real good test. That one is very realistic for like a light impact. Guardrail is a little jiggly right there on that one pillar that kind of got slightly deformed. But aside from that, it's pretty much unfazed. See, that's the exact kind I was looking for this whole time. It's just a really tiny bump. Nothing severe and crazy like I was doing before. Just a bump. And that was not a bump. It's a little hard because the guardrail does eat your car. So if you kind of just bump it, sometimes it'll be a lot worse because your whole car will just be absorbed by it. There we go. That's another good bump. That's a real hefty bump, though, because it took out my car. But once again, guardrail holding strong. So let's finish things off with something really insane and crazy. Let's grab the Lancer Evolution. And we're going to hit it at like 300 miles per hour. Well, maybe not 300, 200 maybe. Oh, weird. The turbo's not working. Turbo! There we go. That was strange. So I'm going to go ahead and put the guardrail right there. Looks good. Stop being crashed. Ready, set. I forgot exactly where the guardrail is probably on this first one there. I don't know if I'll be able to hit it. Looks like it's... Is that the guardrail? Yes, it is. Full speed ahead! Oh! It, like, stripped the rail off. Oh, I gotta do that again in slow-mo. That was cool. Where'd the rail go? Oh, not that far. It's just over there blending in really well. Actually, it fell through the ground. It's not really blending in, is it? So now, same thing, but I'm gonna throw on some slow-mo, which is kind of hard to do with my current control scheme. So what I'll probably do is just do eight times slow-mo here, and then I'll do the rest in slow-mo, just because that's the only way I can do this, because I have to have a hand on T, and then a hand on the controls, and try to switch with T and all and all. It's hard. I mean, I guess what I could do is use the keyboard for that, but ah, too late now. This is the way we doing it. Just barely clipping it. Oh my goodness. It shreds your vehicle. I mean, I'm going 200 miles per hour, so it's like, what do you expect? Wow. I, like, tore the whole roof off, or the whole front of the roof off and stuff. Just absolute annihilation. Oh, there goes the rest of the car. Wrapped it around a tree. Where did the guardrail go this time? Well, that time it went a little bit. Well, I think uh, that'll do it for the guardrail. Until next time, this has been YBR. I'll see ya. Required leap of death run, go! Wow, that was amazing!